Hello and welcome to another episode of Math with Stone. Today we're going to be learning about the surface area of pyramids and cones. Let's get into it. So one of the most important things that we need to know about is the distinguishing difference between the slant height and the actual height of either a pyramid or a cone. So the slant height of a cone and the slant height of a pyramid are the, the side that is on the side of the actual shape, not the one going from the bottom directly to the top. And one of the most important things is why is that important? So what we have here is we have a, a cone that is kind of being pulled up. And what I want you to do is look at the radius of the circle, the one that's flat on the ground. And then when we pull it up, notice how that radius becomes the slant height. It becomes the part that is actually on the side of the cone. And this is one way a cone is formed. And it is also showing you and forming that surface area, which explains why that slant height is so important when finding the surface area of either a cone or a pyramid. So let's start with two different cone problems. And in both scenarios, we're still going to be finding the surface area, but depending on if you are given the slant height versus if you are given the actual height of the cone, you have two different formulas that will help you out with both scenarios. So the first scenario is if you are given the slant height, we have pi r squared plus pi r l. L stands for the slant height. L is the slant height. And then if we're not given the slant height, then we have this bottom formula, which is virtually the same thing, but you notice that it has the square root of the r squared and the h squared. Well, that is really just the Pythagorean theorem built into the formula to get us that slant height. Okay, so we're going to do two problems with cones. And we're going to see how that looks. In the first problem that I have here, the 8 is a slant height, so I will be using the slant height formula and be plugging in 8 for L. So I'm going to just do that right now. We got pi r squared, that would be 5 squared, plus pi r L pi times 5 times the L, which is 8. And I just use the formula and I plug in things. I'm going to be using 3.14 for pi. So we got 3.14 times 25. That's what 5 squared is. And then here I'm just going to end up doing 3.14 times 40. I could type this all in my calculator at one time. I just decided to separate it out there. So I'm going to do the 3.14 times 25. And I'm going to be adding that to 3.14 times 40. And when we add all that together and multiply it together, we're going to get a total answer of 204.1. And that's it. There's, there's nothing to it other than that. Um, technically, that would be inches squared because we're dealing with area. All right. So the next problem we're going to be dealing with is having a 5 as the radius but the height is 12, not the slant height, the normal height. So if the normal height is given and not the slant height, you wouldn't use the formula with the L, you'd have to use the one underneath it, which essentially this part right here gives us the L within the Pythagorean theorem, it's built into the formula. So we're just gonna plug it into that formula, probably do it in steps and go from there. We got pi times r, the radius is five squared plus pi times 5 times the square root of the radius squared and the height squared. And I'm going to do this in stages. I'm going to do uh, pi, which is 3.14, times 25. And I'm going to write 3.14 times 5. I'm going to type in 5 squared plus 12 squared in my calculator. If I do 5 squared plus 12 squared in my calculator, if I do that, I get 25 and 144. And when I add the 5 squared and 12 squared, the 25 and 144, I get 169. Okay? So from here, I'm going to multiply five, uh, really I'm just going to, I'm going to take the square root of 169 and that happens to be 13. and 3.14 times 25. 
So I just took the square root of 169, that's 13. Um, and now from here, I'm just gonna type everything in my calculator. I got pi, 3.14 times 25. I'm gonna type that in, 3.14 times 25. I'm gonna get an answer. I'm gonna do it in stages this time, 78.5. And then I'm gonna add in 3.14 times 5 times 13. Typing that in, I get 204.1. And then I have to add in these two things together. So plus 78.5, I get 282.6. Uh, we didn't say what unit of measurement. Let's call this one centimeters. So that'd be centimeters squared. So that's it for cones. Cones, in my opinion, are easier for surface area than the pyramids will be, and that is because they are always going to be a derivative of a circle. We saw how that circle got pulled up. Um, pyramids are going to be an easier shape, but just a little bit more tedious. So before we actually find the surface area of a pyramid, I feel like it's important to look at the net of a pyramid, which is really just how it unfolds. And if you're looking at it, you'll notice that there are four triangles and then the one rectangular or square shape at the bottom. And in order to find the full surface area, we have to find the area of all of those things and then add them together. So we have to find the area of the four triangles and the one rectangle. So when you're finding the surface area of a pyramid, there's no real formula that you have to deal with. It's more just adding up all of the areas of every single side of this actual shape, which a pyramid, most cases, is going to be triangles on all four sides. You could have a three-sided one. So we have one, two, three, four triangles surrounding this pyramid, and then either the square or the rectangle on the bottom. So I have to add up the area of every single surface, which means I have to find the area of those triangles and then the area of the bottom, okay? So it'd be important to know what is the area formula of a triangle. Well, the area formula of a triangle is equal to one half the base times the height. And the base is really the bottom of the triangle and the height is the height of the triangle, not the height of the pyramid, okay? Because the height of this triangle is really going to be the slanted height that's actually on the surface of the triangle, okay? So this height is not the height of the pyramid, it's the height of the triangle, which is the slant height in this case, okay? So this is really the slant height of the pyramid but when you peel off the triangle, it'd be the height of the triangle, all right? So let's say that this rectangle at the bottom is 10 this way and eight that way. And I am going to be given the slant height right here is, I'm gonna say the slant height is 12, okay? So we have 10 by eight for the rectangle and this triangle here is a 10 by 12, which means the base is going to be 10 and the slant height or height of the triangle is 12. So the formula for the area of that triangle would be as follows. We have one half the 10 times the 12, the slant height. And then we just follow through with that math and when we do that, we'd get the area of that triangle as 60. 60 inches, 60 something like that. Uh, we'll call it inches. So that would be 60 inches squared. Now, recognize that that's just the area of this one triangle here on the left side. We also have a duplicate of it on the other side, the right side. So we have this triangle here on the left and we have the triangle on the right. If we think of that as the left triangle has 60 and the right triangle has an area of 60, we would have to end up adding those together to be able to get the total surface area, but we still have more triangles to deal with. We have this front facing triangle and the back triangle. Well, we haven't found the area of those yet, and we're gonna do that now. So the area of the front triangle is still going to have a slant height of 12, okay? That never changes. If you're given one slant height, it'll be the same slant height for every single other surface of the pyramid. So for the other area, we would have a base no longer of 10, but of eight, and a still slant height of 12, the height of the actual triangle. We can multiply this together and we would get 48. 
And that would be the area of the front triangle and the back triangle would be 48 and another 48. So now that we have the area of the left triangle, the right triangle, the front triangle, the back triangle, we have the area of all the triangles that really make a pyramid, but we still haven't gotten the last surface, which is the bottom of the pyramid, uh, the, the rectangular base of the shape. And the area of any rectangle is equal to length times width, and the length would be eight, and the width would be 10, or vice versa, depends on how you view it. So the area of this rectangle would be eight times 10, which is really simply 80, okay? So we have the four triangles and we have that rectangle. If we add all of those together, the 60, the front, back, left, right, all of those together, if we add them, we end up with 80 and 60 and 60 and 48 and 48. We end up with a total surface area of 296 inches squared. So unfortunately, uh, rectangular pyramids, they don't have a simple formula. All right, we're gonna do one more example with rectangular pyramids, and then we're gonna be finished for the video. So for our next pyramid, we're gonna be dealing with a problem that doesn't give us the slant height, but actually gives us the, from top to bottom, going directly in the middle of the pyramid, the actual height of the pyramid which would be great if we were finding volume, but for surface area, we need the slanted height. We need that part that is on the side of the pyramid, and we don't have that right now. So what we're gonna end up doing is we're gonna end up having to use the Pythagorean theorem to get that. So what we have here is inside this pyramid, there is multiple right triangles, but we're just gonna focus on one of them with a height of eight. You can kinda see it right here. That's the triangle I'm trying to draw. We're looking for the slanted height. So we need that slant height. That's gonna be the C in our Pythagorean theorem. And we already have the eight as the height. Uh, but we need this bottom part right here and it's, it's kind of looking like it's gonna be related to the 12, but you'll notice that it's not gonna be really 12. It's gonna be just half of the 12. We're gonna to have to split that in half because this center is in the middle and the middle of 12 is six. So we have our two other sides of our right triangle. So we can actually follow through with our Pythagorean theorem. We're looking for the slanted height, which in this case is the slanty part of C. So we have six squared and eight squared equals C squared, which turns into 36 and 64 is equal to c squared. And when we follow through by square rooting the 100, the square root of 100 gives us 10 as our c, which really, more importantly, gives us our slant height, which is 10 as well. Okay? Now that we have our slant height, now we can do the problem just like we did on the previous one, where we have our slant height, which means we have the height of the triangle itself, not the pyramid, but the triangle that are making the pyramid up, and we can find the area of the outside four triangles. Luckily for us, this is a square base, so all four of those triangles are gonna be identical. The front, left, right, and uh, back triangle are all going to be the same area. In case we forgot, area of a triangle is one half the bottom base times the height, which in this case is the slant height of the pyramid. So the bottom is going to be 12. So we have one half 12 times the slant height, height of the triangle, which is 10. We multiply those together, we'll find out the area of one of these triangles is six times 10, which is 60. Now I said already before that these, uh, this pyramid is made up of four identical triangles because essentially the shape that we have looks like this. We have a square and one triangle, two triangle, three triangle, 
four triangle. Imagine if those four triangles were just pulled upward, they would pull upward and make that pyramid. Like they just could fold up and make the pyramid. So if all four of these triangles are identical and all four of them had that bottom of 12 and the slant height of 10, they would all four have an area of 60. So that would be the front, back, left, right triangles. Because it had a square base, it's gonna be the exact same area for all four triangles. Remember, don't forget the area of the bottom, which in this case is a square, 12 by 12 square. So our real formula, not formula, but surface area would be all four of the triangles, all four 60s added together. And then the area of the square, so these are the triangles, and then we have the area of the square, which is a 12 by 12 square. Well, length times width, 12 times 12 makes 144. So we have our four triangles and the square on the bottom. That would comprise our entire surface area. So I have to add up all those 60s and then the 144. And if I add up all of those numbers, I get 384 and that would be my final answer and I'm gonna call that inches squared for surface area. That's gonna be doing it for today everybody. Till next time, have a great day. Bye.